The Sinking of the Gribschunden Shipwrecks are being discovered thanks to the advances in nautical technology and marine archaeology. Still, for the Gribschunden, the 15th century warship, its sinking meant it joined the mysterious underwater graveyard feared by many a sailor. But since its discovery on the Baltic seabed, many of the questions surrounding its mysterious demise have been answered. The royal flagship of John, King of Denmark, symbolized military power. Its last voyage would be in the summer of 1495, when the monarch set sail for Kalmar, Sweden. The mission? Enter negotiations with Sten Stuer the Elder, the Swedish leader who was threatening to break the Swede away from Kalmar Union. For a delicate diplomatic mission, it made perfect sense to embark on the beautiful vessel. However, en route, whilst anchored in a natural harbor near the port of Ronby, the Gribschunden caught fire. The event was recorded in a contemporaneous journal, the Stur Chronicle, as well as two German sources. It was through these that the public came to learn that John had not been aboard during the boat's final moments. Clearly, the gods of the seas had saved him that day. But as reported by an expedition memer, Tide Crab, many of the 150 crewmen aboard the ship died as it sank. Some succumbed to the flame, others to the smoke, and many to the waters. Though John would eventually travel to his meeting, a meeting Sten would miss, the wreck lay underwater for the next half century. For its time, it was one of the largest and most technologically advanced warships in all of Northern Europe, so its sinking came at a cost to science, the king's military power, and political stability. Its disaster contributed to a two-year delay in a resolution, and though John would eventually emerge the victor and recreate the precise Kalmar Union, for a moment, the future of the Nordic world rested on the survival and demise of this ship. So, what went wrong? How was it that such a coveted vessel could meet such a shocking and sudden end? Here, we must examine the context of its final voyage in more detail. You see, in order to impress the Swedish nobleman waiting in Kalmar, King John had amazed everything and everyone onto his ship. The Gribschunden was one of the earliest European naval vessels armored with guns, cutting-edge technology for the time. It also carried extravagant food and drink and members of the royal court peacocking their finest clothes. This was not some run-of-the-mill boat trip with peasants. This was a stunning cruise in every sense of the word. At 35 meters long and 12 meters wide, it was a formidable beast and a sight to behold. Therefore, the loss of influential members of its inner circle diminished the king's influence and court. And alongside these fine members of influence were barrels of gunpowder. Though there is still a mystery as to what started the accidental fire, if indeed it was an accident. What is not a mystery is what happens when naked flames meet combustible material. Boom! The burning ship exploded. Anyone lucky enough to escape the blasts and waters would no doubt have to contend with life-threatening burns and injuries from the rest of their lives. But as the Grubschenden sank into the waters below, parts of the fine ship could stand about the waves, or be visible in shallow water according to testimony at the time. What was salvageable was seized in 1495 and soon after, leaving the support structure to disintegrate and fall to the seafloor. The remains of the ship would settle onto the Baltic Sea's soft, sedimented bottom, which in turn slowly filled and buried what was left in silt. Now out of sight, the ship was out of mind and would be forgotten until the 1970s when a scuba diving club discovered the well-preserved wreck. Small finds were quickly scavenged, life golf ball-sized cannonballs, crossbow bolts, and even metal and ceramic objects like jugs. Though they did not know her name, the scuba club came to know the wreck well, but the identity was finally unmasked in 2001. After much careful exploring, the divers noticed remains of an early naval gun carriages. Upon informing the Kalmar Museum, archaeologists undertook a two-day dive which enabled them to confirm the historical significance of the remains. The next few years saw brief and limited interventions. But the discovery of the ghoulish figurehead, a griffin dog eating someone, 
sparked more curiosity. By 2018, a consortium of interested Swedish and Danish institutions was formed to propel its study. Finally, the first extensive excavation campaign took place at the end of summer in 2019. For three weeks, an international team of maritime archaeologists mapped the wreck with exquisite precision. Now, those reports and findings have emerged. It is said that the teams were making impressive discoveries within the first few hours, seizing objects that had no previous archaeological precedent. Historians were able to examine the incredibly well-preserved ship to learn more about 15th century ship construction. Whereas royal emblems marked on barrels of fish and beer imply the king's household was on board. Toy cannons, a spindle, and a small-sized hauberk suggest women and children also perished in the disaster. But one of the most significant finds was a small, unique hand cannon. The weapon reflects the transition between medieval combat equipment and the gunpowder weapons of a new era. And still the presence of weapons and armor contests to what extent this was a diplomatic mission, as previously recorded all those years ago. Was John's intent to demonstrate his military might a way to support his persuasion, or did he view his meeting as an opportunity to remove Sten once and for all? And yet, more answers keep coming. A recent excavation that ended in 2021 uncovered silver count as well as decorated paneling, exotic spices, and even slips. Yet despite all the discoveries and revelations, experts have not been able to piece together the cause of the spark that almost burnt down the entire diplomatic mission. The influence of the gunpowder is clear, yet with all those people on board and all that fancy new tech and drinking, there are too many possibilities for what could have ignited the disaster. So, it leaves us to wonder whether the catastrophe could have been avoided, or whether John's pride would have always resulted in the sinking. It is a strange dramatic irony then, that one of the world's most perfectly preserved shipwrecks has given away many of its secrets, except for the most important one of all. How exactly did everything go so wrong? If you think you have the theory, then let us know in the comments. If you'd like us to make more videos like this, then leave a like, and don't forget to share this with any history buff you may know. Thanks again for watching. We'll be back soon with a new video, so subscribe to get notified.